Hi, I want to welcome you to Northampton Reptile Centre's snake video. Today we're going to be talking about corn snakes, king snakes and milk snakes and how their husbandry and how we keep them in captivity is all the same. For the purposes of this video we're going to be just looking at the corn snake and we'll go through this video as though corn snakes are what you're going to keep um, and then we'll talk at the end about slight adaptations that you might need if you're keeping the kings and the milks. Now here we've got a, a ghost corn, but there are so many different coloration variants now in the UK, different colour morphs, uh, and it means you've got lots and lots of choices, especially if you're going to keep a colony. Basically we've got red rats, which is the original, and ochre tea rats, and then as it progresses on we've got anthristic, which means it's lost its orange morph, it's all black, we've got amelanistic, which means it's lost its black morph and it's all orange. And then as you can imagine, there's been lots and lots and lots of crosses over the time. That means that we have hundreds now of different colour variations. Now corn snakes live uh, 15 to 20 years. This is an adult, so this is basically about four foot. And you can expect a corn snake to get no, no more than five foot, perhaps a little bit bigger than this. And it takes about four to five years to get to this size. Now, sort of things you need to look for when you get your corn snake and when you're going to buy one is basically that it looks nice, healthy, the eyes are bright and as you can see, tongue's flicking. Now the tongue flicking is basically it tasting the air and then it brings it into an organ in the roof of the mouth and that's how this animal smells. Right, now I'm going to talk to you about how to get your corn snake out of your vivarium. It's very important that you don't worry about picking them up. So as long as you're confident and you can just scoop them up with both hands underneath their body weight, they'll be absolutely fine and really easy to get out. What's great about corn snakes is that they love to sit on your lap, they love to play in your hands, and in fact would curl up and go to sleep with you. They're really, really relaxing, so it's absolutely great. If you've got a snake that you've had for a year or so and it's time for you to add another one, you've got to make the decision of why you're adding one. Are you adding it because you want a colony, that you want different colour morphs, or are you wanting your second and third snake because you're considering breeding? Either way, sexing the snake is really, really important. Now if you're going to have a colony, have them all the same sex. And if you're going to go into breeding, then have them sexed and have a group of females and introduce a male when you're ready. What we don't want to do is have two females in the tank and a male, find that the females are far too young and they can't pass their eggs. Really, you want to be breeding your corn snakes when they are adult, when they are this size. Now we're going to talk about feeding your corn snake. These animals eat defrosted rodents. With a hatchling corn, I would be expecting to feed once every week. And with something like this, a grown on one, I would be looking at feeding it every two weeks. To defrost your mouse, we let them defrost naturally. What you don't want to do is use a microwave. Some people will do that and it will raise the bacteria levels and actually can make the corn snake quite poorly. We would feed the snakes using a set of tweezers. We're not doing that because the corn snake's dangerous in any way. We're doing it because we want the animal to feel secure. Now the great thing about using a wooden vivarium is, as you can imagine, it insulates the temperature. With the setup that we are going to advise you on, it means that that animal is always at the optimum temperature for it to digest its food and it's getting the security that this animal needs to stay happy and healthy and contented. Now, how to heat your vivarium. Now, we've already discussed that you're going to be using a wooden vivarium because we want you to insulate the heat. 
We're going to do this in two formats. We've got a daytime and a nighttime heat system. The nighttime heat system is a heat mat. They heat when there is a contact, when something comes into contact with them. And because of that, we always use a thermostat. We always regulate that heat mat. We would always bring the sensor of the thermostat onto the heat mat and we would then regulate that to about 85 degrees. The next bit we're going to talk about is getting your daytime temperature and we're going to do that by using a light bulb and we're going to make sure it's guarded. Really make sure when you guard your light bulb that it's really pushed into the corner. There's no little nooks and crannies for these corn snakes to get into the guard. They do get into the smallest of spaces so that's really, really essential. Now what you need to remember is every wattage of light bulb, the higher the wattage the more heat it produces. So typically in a three foot vivarium we would be using a 60 watt light bulb. Make sure your thermometer is then on the back wall so you're really looking at the air temperature. And remember, you've got a hot and a cold end. So we've got the light bulb at the same end as the heat mat and we've then got the cooler end that the animal can choose which end it wants to go to and that's really essentially why we use a three foot vivarium. Now the substrate we like to use is beech wood chip. The reason we like that is it's been tested by BP. We know it's chemical free and we know it's dust free. Now we're going to talk about what to put in your vivarium and remember it's really important that this snake is, has its security and can feel, really feel comfortable. Things we want to put in there is some foliage, somewhere for it to climb and ramble on, a hide so it feels secure and a water bowl. And change your water every day or every two days at the outside because these animals do know when it's fresh water and they will come over and have a drink. And every couple of months, when you start to see the snake change its colour and it's obvious that it wants to shed its skin, we would be putting a moss box in there. The moss holds that little bit of moisture, that little bit of dampness, and then it helps the, the snake lose its skin all in one shed. Now, it's really important not to leave the moss box in there all the time. We don't want that to end up uh, with the bacteria levels going up and it ending up nasty because what will happen is the snake may curl up and stay in there for long periods of time and they are very susceptible to scale rot. So only leave the moss box in there for that few days while you're getting them ready to shed. Once they've shed, take it out. Now, one of the things that always worries me, where, where things are going wrong and people aren't sure of the symptoms, one is when your corn snake has fed and then it regurges its food. Now, it can be regurging its food for a number of reasons. The main thing is with the vivarium we've talked about with you today and the setup we've talked about here today, we know those temperatures that that animal is living in are exactly right and that, that means that it can digest its food. One of the reasons it would throw the food up is because it's too cold and it's taken the food item in, the food item has started to rot in the stomach and it can't hold it in, it's thrown it up. So that's a real important reason to give us a call and let us talk through your setup, see if we can give you any advice and check what you're doing. The last bit is shedding the skin and I don't mean shedding the skin because you haven't put the moss box in and it's too dry to take the skin off. I'm on about when there is actually a health issue. It's not shedding the skin because it's perhaps not absorbing the vitamins properly or there's other underlying problems. Now remember again, we're always here. You can come into the shop at any time or you can just give us a call and we'll talk through all this with you and we'll give you the best advice we can. Milk snakes and king snakes have exactly the same requirements as corn snakes. It means that their husbandry and their heating requirements are the same, their health issues are the same, their feeding requirements are the same. The main bit that is different is the fact that king snakes and milk snakes can potentially be cannibalous. We don't keep them together at all, we keep them separate. The only time we will put them together is at the time when we're breeding and we'll bring the male into the female and we will do that for a short period of time and in totally in controlled conditions. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it helpful. Do remember that we've now got a collection of videos that we're doing for lots of different animals and all their husbandry needs so please go to the website and have a look at all of those and remember if there's anything in this video that you're unsure about or you think you need some extra advice please give us a ring or come in the shop and see us and we'll do anything we can to help you. Again thanks for watching and staying with me.